Hello and thanks for coming back to the channel for another video. Today's vlog, in today's vlog, I'm gonna talk about five more photography channels that you should be watching. I did this a while ago and I was surprised by the amount of traction and I suppose interaction that it, it gained. It wasn't just people saying, why am I not on there? There was a little bit of that, but also people who hadn't seen these other channels and then went over and followed them and liked their content which is always a good thing to do. So I wanted to do another five because in that video I said I could have done 10, I could have done 15, I could have done 50. But I think I'll make this into a sort of irregular video content idea where I try and highlight five other channels. I think five's enough. I think five gives you enough channels to go away and watch five videos from those channels. I, th I think any more than that per video would be too much. So I've picked out my five for this, for this, for this time round and I wanted to start things off with someone you're probably following already, but it's David Griffiths. As I call him, DG is a fantastic photographer and he's really pushing the Micro Four Thirds to its full capability. This new Olympus kit that he's got has expanded his viewer viewing base fantastically and he probably doesn't need this, this piece of camera done about him because he's, his subscription has, has skyrocketed. But He's such a nice chap, he's a friend, he's so knowledgeable, he's a proper gent, he knows everything there is to know about Anglesey, Snowdonian, North Wales, that kind of area, but he, he's, he's knowledgeable about, about everything photography as well. So if you're not following him already, go and follow David Griffiths, and here is a clip from one of his videos. Now you won't see me use this particular lens very often, it's an ultra wide angle, 11 to 16 millimeters. And the reason I've put this on is because I've got an awful lot to get in this shot. Now you might think that shooting a mountain like Trevon with a really wide angle is going to push it too far into the distance. Under normal circumstances you might be right. But what I'm looking to do with this is to use a leading line of this stream or Avon Fleur as it's known, which is a river that runs down into Thin Olguin. I'm using it as a leading line. But the thing about shooting Trevon is there's a classic shot way further up, which I'll be walking up to during the course of this particular outing. And I'll take a snap up there to show you what I mean. It's a classic composition with a wall and a style. And it really irritates me because Trevon is almost an afterthought as a tiny little mountain in the far distance. The north ridge of Trevon is absolutely imposing. And from my perspective, I really want it to be the star of the show in my image. So the second photography channel that I wanted to highlight is Nick's Picks. So it's run by Nick Smith, who is a chap who came to the first ever meetup that I organised over a year ago on the northwest coast. Lovely chap, fantastic landscape photographer, but I wanted to highlight his channel because of the work that he's doing macro. He's doing a Macro Monday series and it's a little bit like my lunchtime photography series you can sort of do it whenever you want and the work that he's doing on that to highlight that area of photography is fantastic he's a lovely bloke fantastic skill and knowledge and as i say his macro work is is brilliant so i encourage you to go and check it out especially on a monday evening when he uploads his macro mondays videos but here is a little clip from one of them okay so we've got a few things on the table we're sort of ready to get things set up um, but it's quite a project so uh, I've got a bit of help um, from my daughter. Hello. Who's uh, willing to give us a hand in creating some sort of scenario or some sort of scene that we can use to uh, take photos of the little people with the macro lens. So uh, we're gonna crack on and put something together and uh, we'll come back to you in a minute. The next channel that I wanted to talk about is from Susanna Mary. She is a fantastic photographer and the word that I would use to describe her photography is delicate. Her images are very delicate, her presentation style is very delicate, but everything is beautiful. The first video that I saw of her and the one that I'll put a clip up of in a minute was when she was canoeing across a lake and she was taking pictures on the canoe and it was a completely different way of taking pictures, something that was a bit of a niche. There was nothing 
The photography vlogging area is saturated, but this was completely different and it really captured my attention. She's only got a handful of vlogs out so far, but I think if you get in early, this channel is gonna go places. So here's the clip from Susanna. So just to talk you through an image I found, up ahead in front of me is a really cool mountain which has uh, reflections in the um, sort of reflection water as the tide's gone out and uh, lower to the ground you can see these almost tree-like structures uh, so they're like veins um, in the sand going out to um, my main subject which is this mountain right here so I'm gonna walk on down and see if I can get some long exposures the Sun has risen there is no sunrise there's a little bit of color but it's not what I was expecting um, but sunset is set to be good so I'm gonna hang around this area and see what kind of snaps I can get the next channel again you might know him it's Darren Spoonley he's a fantastic landscape photographer brilliant images and he wanted me to he asked if I could mention this. He does a podcast as well. I think he's a part of a three-man team that do a podcast, a regular Irish podcast. And I've kind of got into podcasts recently because when I'm doing work, I find watching a video quite hard to do whilst I'm doing the work, but just having the audio around you is really good. So I've listened to a few of his podcasts and they're really, really good, but his photography channel is fantastic as well. Brilliant Irish landscapes and other stuff as well. It's not just Irish landscapes, but he's, he's a fantastic chap very very knowledgeable again and yeah here's a little clip from one of his videos something i love to do is use a long exposure to create a scene that effectively is naturally there it is there as such you know so all the elements and everything else that we're going to look at today are physically here but you have a moving element which is your water and what that's going to do is create something that is only going to be there for a fleeting moment. And what I'm going to do today um, is I have, at the moment, my Lee Little Stopper on, and that's going to give me uh, six stops of extra light or exposure, so it allows me to keep the shutter open for a longer period of time, which means it's recording all of the movement in the water, but you actually won't see any waves. What you'll see is the milky smooth aspect of the water as it flows through the scene, the rocks are the static element, and I'm looking at a sea stack here in front of me, which would be the static element as well within the shot. And with the Lee Little Stopper, it's allowing me at the moment at F9 to get a 25 second exposure. I've come to a corner of the beach here where I am, which is on the Copper Coast. It's a place that I visited on a number of occasions on previous episodes of my vlog. And I'm at a beach at the moment called Ballyduan, and that has a sequence of stacks. There's some on the right-hand side, which is where I'm at at the moment, and then there's a singular stack as well, which is over on the left-hand side of the beach. So the final person I want to talk about today is Starman, Stephen Cheatley. He's fantastic at astro, and you might have seen from my videos recently, I'm really getting into astro. It's an area of photography that I didn't really think I'd be any good at, but since trying it just a little bit, I've enjoyed it. and. I've had some fantastic feedback from Stephen as well. He's a, he's a very accomplished photographer. He won some award last year. I can't remember what it was, but it was it was a national or international award. And his astro images are fantastic. And his vlog is starting to pick up as he's like Mark McNeil when I mentioned on the pre. That they're like good friends as well. When I mentioned him on the last video when I did this top five, he is a photographer first whereas I'm good at the video side of stuff and sort of learning the photography he's very very accomplished at the photography side of it he's also got his drone license so there's some fantastic cinematics and stuff like that but his astro stuff is is off the, is off the scale it's it's fantastic so if you're into astro like I am and if you fancy giving it a little bit of a living a little bit of a go then Stephen is your man and here's one of the clips from one of his videos now I'm not sure if this is actually going to work because I've got uh, clouds which is not really ideal at the moment but it's uh, it's not quite dark enough yet anyway so we'll wait and see if these clouds clear when it gets dark enough to be able to see the stars. Yeah so I've got it set to the ISO is set to 100, uh, don't need a really high ISO to do star trails. I've got it on an aperture of f5.6, there's no hard and fast rule, you don't need a 
super fast lens like this one, f2.8, um, if you've got a, something like f4 or even f5.6, it doesn't matter, you can do star trails. You don't need a fast lens to do a star trail. You can, you can do star trails quite easily with a kit lens, no problem whatsoever. That's the way I've got the camera set up for this uh, particular shot, this very challenging shot, should I say. Although saying that, it's, uh, the weather's pretty good. It's, uh, it's dry. Um, it's not that cold up here either. I've actually come up onto the car park to get above all these lights down here, although I've got these lights up here to contend with. But they're not going to be a, a problem for this photograph because I've got the lens pointed well away from these lights and I'm focusing right on the tower. The only thing I need to think about is that I don't want to expose for too long because if I expose for too long the light pollution that comes up from all these lights will interfere with the exposure and that will block out some of the fainter stars so I don't really want to do that. I've got to balance the exposure so that I get some bright stars in there and a fairly darkish background. So I hope you've enjoyed me highlighting another five photography YouTube channels for you. I hope you can go and check them out and I want to thank those five individuals for letting me give them that little bit of exposure and use their clips as well to make this video. There were so many more people that I could have chosen and I was I was debating between 10 or 11 of them but I think I'll leave the next lot for another video and as I say I'll try and do one of these not frequently but every every few months to sort of let you know who I'm watching and that might encourage you to go and watch them as well but as always thanks for watching thanks for joining me on another video and I hope you can join me on the next one.